Hey everybody, so I'm back after a bit of a break and because I'm doing my doctorate degree right now, uh, it can be a little bit hard to get these videos out for you guys. But nevertheless, when I do have some time to do a video, trust me, I will do one. In my last YouTube poll, I asked you guys what you wanted to see next and the results were clear. Today I'm going to be covering Peter Bernstein's comping ideas specifically based on his rhythm changes video, which you can find a link to that in the description of this video. If you haven't seen that, I would highly recommend checking it out. All right, let's get right into it. Okay, so the first topic that Peter covers in this video is the idea of simplification. So Peter tells us that a lot of the chords and rhythm changes come from the same sound as they come from the same scale. And he says because of this, you can think about the overall big five one of things instead of thinking about each individual chord. So what does that mean? The first set of chords is a one, six, two, five progression just played twice. This can be simplified to just playing the five chord over all these chords, as remember, they all come from the same sound, and basically the most important thing about uh, diatonic harmony is tension and release, five going to one. So what does this mean for us? Well, if the bass player is walking these changes, we don't have to comp every single change. We can just pretty much comp F7 and it'll work over all these sounds. Notice how I focused on rhythm and small melodies in my comping. When you simplify the chords, this becomes easier to do, as you don't have to think about all these different chords, you can just think about one chord and it makes it a lot simpler to harmonize simple melodies. Listen to Peter's comping and you'll hear exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> So what happens if we apply this concept to a 2-5-1? Well, we can ignore the 2 chord, as it's just part of the same sound as a 2-5-1, and just play 5-1. Here's an example. Also this works great in turnarounds, such as the last couple bars in the A section of uh, Take the A Train. Okay, so the next concept is what Peter calls the law of gravity. So he says instead of doing a five to one like we were doing before, we can instead replace the five chord with a half step approach to the chord that we're going to. So let's take the first four chords of rhythm changes. Now let's think about the small five to ones in that progression. So first we can make the G minor seven into G seven, as the G7 is the five of C minor, right? So G7 wants to go to C minor. Easy. Okay, but let's apply Peter's law of gravity to that. So instead of G7, we're gonna play D flat minor seven, as it's a half step above C minor, and it wants to go to C minor. So you can see this works really well. Our ears hear this as the same kind of sound, as a five to one, because remember, it's all about tension and release. So let's keep this idea going. The next five to one is the F7 resolving to the B flat seven, right? So we're just gonna take F7 and replace it with B major seven. So instead of F7, B flat seven, we're gonna do B major seven, B flat major seven. Now Peter takes this one step further and tells us to take the top notes of these chords and move them in the exact opposite direction of the bass line that we're doing. So our first voicing for B flat major seven has F on the top. So let's make F go up chromatically while our bass line uh, moves down. So let's take this and apply it to a tune like Take the A Train, which I mentioned previously. So instead of playing this, We can use the law of gravity to approach that D7 chord like this. Now let's put the finishing touches on it and let's move the top note 
opposite of the bass line. So let's start on D for our C major chord and make it go up that way. So let's use it in 2-5-1 now. So if we had D minor 7, G7, C major 7, let's take our D minor 7 and use the law of gravity, make that a flat major 7, which goes to G7 and finally resolves to C major 7. So the last topic that Peter covers in this video is kind of an extension of the law of gravity, but more focuses on the top note melody part of it. Peter says that when you're comping, you need to focus on simple melodies in your comping and harmonize that with uh, a bass line that makes sense. And by makes sense, I mean leads to one, right? Chord progressions that help us get back to one. So for example, uh, over those first four chords and rhythm changes, let's make a simple diatonic melody line that leads to one, like this. So now let's think about different ways that we can harmonize this melody line to make it work. We could use this bass line. And maybe harmonize it in this way. Or we could maybe think outside the box a little bit and harmonize it with this bass line. Of course, with this type of thinking, I would suggest working out some ideas beforehand instead of trying to uh, improvise um, chord accompaniments in this kind of way, or at least work it out until your ears can hear this. Also, a quick note to remember is that one of the reasons Peter's comping sounds so great, aside from all this really cool stuff, is that his rhythm is so strong. If you want to study rhythms, make sure to check out a couple of my videos just focused on rhythm, which you can find in the video description. I mean, listen to Peter's comping. Listen to the great rhythms that are coming out of this. <laughs> so I want to close this lesson by playing a short little etude over the first A section of rhythm changes. I'm gonna to try to cover everything that we talked about in this video, and you'll be able to find a free PDF of this, again, in the video description below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I don't get a post very often, so I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps out the channel and tells YouTube that people are still watching these videos. Also, the polls that I do are really important now since I'm not posting as much. Uh, it lets me know exactly what you guys want to see, so that way when I make a video, it's not wasted and uh, it's exactly what you guys want. So make sure to watch out for the next poll coming up soon. All right, that's it for today. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and remember to always keep swinging.